You know that feeling when you hear a song and think, wait, haven't I heard this before? It's like maybe Kurt Cobain is rolling in his grave familiar. Some bands are obvious copycats, while others try to hide their inspiration. First album, there's a lot of comparisons to Pearl Jam and Soundgarden and Nirvana and whoever else is from Seattle. Um, it just started getting really annoying. Today, we're showing you the bands that have either cloned or been heavily inspired by Nirvana's perfect formula. There's just so much about Nirvana that has shaped me. This is part one of bands that smells like Nirvana. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Now you might be thinking, Limp Biscuit doesn't really sound like Nirvana. What's the deal? And you're right, on the surface, their rap rock sound doesn't exactly scream Nirvana influence. But Fred Durst, the lead singer of Limp Biscuit, has always been open about his admiration for Kurt Cobain. In fact, he's got Cobain's face tattooed on his chest, alongside Elvis Presley's. Durst has often spoken about how Cobain's music and philosophy have inspired him and how he connects with Cobain's tortured artist persona. Take Limp Biscuit's song It'll Be Okay and My Own Cobain, for example. Durst has said that it's directly about his own depression and inner turmoil, much like Cobain's music. He made significant contributions to the rock scene. In 1999, he discovered and signed several bands to Flawless Records, which was part of Geffen Records. For example, bands like Stained and Puddle of Mud, which were greatly influenced by Nirvana. Also, another band, Revolution Smile, that has a sound and vocals quite similar to the Foo Fighters. Linkin Park, the American rock band, was greatly influenced by Nirvana's sound and style. The band's lead singer, Chester Bennington, often talked about how much Nirvana affected his music. I, I, the best show I've ever, ever been to was uh, I went and saw Pearl Jam, Nirvana, and Red Hat Chili Peppers playing uh, together, and I believe, in my opinion, that respectively, their, their best records. It was, it was amazing. Um, it, they were such, they were so different, and and, uh, you know, for me, um, I think that you know Nirvana really helped shape kind of how I viewed music, um, and and. Uh, there's so many aspects of all of their albums that kind of have influenced me as a musician. So um, I would definitely put uh, I would definitely put them in, in the top ten artists that have inspired me to want to be in a band for sure. Bennington mentioned that Nirvana's music played a big role in shaping Linkin Park's early sound, especially on their first album, Hybrid Theory. This album features heavy, aggressive music combined with Bennington's emotional singing especially in songs like Crawling and In The End. I put my trust in you, as far as I can go. Both Kurt Cobain from Nirvana and Chester Bennington faced struggles with addiction, likely as ways to cope with their tough life experiences. They both had difficulty maintaining healthy marriages, possibly reflecting their parents' troubled relationships. Both Kurt and Chester died at the height of their fame, shocking their fans. Their deaths were seen as a tragic loss of voices that spoke to their generation. Nickelback is a punchline for many. Look at this crowd! but still one of the most popular rock bands out there. Now, when it comes to Nickelback, if you scratch beneath the surface, you can find some interesting similarities with Nirvana. First, there's the post-grunge sound, which emerged in the late 1990s and early 2000s. But here's the thing. Nickelback's music, particularly in their early days, had a certain, let's call it grunginess to it. Take their debut single Curb, for example. It's a riff-heavy, grunge-inspired track that wouldn't be out of place on a Nirvana or a Pearl Jam album. And then there's the lyrical themes, 
Chad Kruger's lyrics often touch on feelings of alienation and frustration, much like Kurt Cobain's. Now it's worth noting that Nickelback's music is more aligned with mainstream rock, whereas Nirvana's sound was more raw and grungy. But the parallels between the two bands are undeniable. And it's not like Nickelback was trying to hide it. Chad Kruger has openly talked about the influence of Nirvana on his songwriting. However, he seems to question any surprise Kurt Cobain might have had when Nirvana became very famous after releasing Nevermind. In 2014, he told Bloomberg, I always thought it was strange when these artists like Kurt Cobain or whoever would get really famous and say, I don't understand why this is happening to me. I don't understand, oh, the fame, the fame, the fame. He added, there is a mathematical formula to why you got famous. Look at this math. It isn't some magical thing that just started happening. And it's going to move exponentially throughout your career as you grow, or can decline exponentially if you start to fail as an artist. In April 1994, Australian band Silverchair, then known as Innocent Criminals, made a significant breakthrough by winning a national band competition with their song Tomorrow. This victory coincided eerily with Kurt Cobain's death, marking the end of Nirvana and arguably the grunge era. As Silverchair's song soared to number one in various countries, including Australia, Canada, and the United States, the young band, whose members were just 15, began to be compared heavily to iconic American grunge bands like Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, and especially Nirvana. Despite their rising fame and the many stylistic parallels drawn by critics between Silverchair and Nirvana, particularly due to their three-piece formation and frontman Daniel Johns' blonde hair, the band consistently denied intentionally mimicking Nirvana's sound or aesthetic. First album, there's a lot of comparisons to Pearl Jam and Soundgarden and Nirvana and whoever else is from Seattle. Um, it just started getting really annoying. After a while, we always kind of liked that music, but we were never like huge fans. And we were really always into, since we were about 12 years old, we were into Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and stuff like that. And just seeing that Soundgarden and Nirvana and bands like that must have listened to the same kind of stuff. Despite these claims, their early work, particularly the album Frog Stomp, did bear a striking resemblance to the grunge sound that Nirvana had popularized. A fabricated story about the origin of their band name, claiming it was a mix-up involving the Nirvana song Sliver and Berlin Chair by UMI, further spurred media comparisons although it was later revealed that the name actually came from a book by C.S. Lewis. While Silverchair's early work may have reflected grunge elements, their subsequent albums showcased a broader range in musical style, diminishing the Nirvana comparisons over time. Their later albums, such as Diorama, featured orchestral elements, indicating the band's evolution and versatility. Despite hypothetical musings on whether Silverchair's rapid rise was partly due to Nirvana's abrupt end, it's evident that Silverchair's talent, especially considering their age, was a significant driving factor behind their success. When talking about rock bands, we can't leave out Seether. They're from South Africa, and are often said to sound a lot like Nirvana. Their lead singer, Sean Morgan, has a voice that's pretty similar to Kurt Cobain. Actually, before Seether, Sean was in a Nirvana cover band, He's been open about how Nirvana's album Nevermind changed his life. It inspired him to start that cover band when he was a teenager. When I was about 12, 13 is when I heard, you know, Nevermind. And I went home and played that CD from, from start to finish 12, 13 times and, and pretty much, you know, made up my mind on, on the spot that that's what I wanted. I wanted to learn how to play these songs and I wanted to learn how to play like that. You can still spot the influence in Seether's music, especially when they cover Nirvana songs. Stuck in self without any words. I got so high, I scratch till I'm glad. I love myself better than you. 
sometimes Sean sounds so much like Cobain, and this affected the band's own identity. Morgan's singing style kinda echoes Cobain's raspy voice, and that whole grunge vibe, he maintains his own unique style. Unlike Cobain's more uncontrolled emotional cry, Morgan's approach is controlled and refined. Also, take their debut album, Disclaimer, for example. Songs like Fine Again and Driven Under have that same heavy, guitar-driven sound that Nirvana was known for. Morgan never shied away from admitting Nirvana was a huge influence on him, unlike some people who did. He always gave them credits for paving the road and making what they do possible. One time, when asked if he'd like to jam with the remaining members of Nirvana, he said, uh, I mean, it would be something that I would love to do, but it's not something that anyone has ever asked me to do. And, um, you know, obviously, just from being a kid, that would be even just to play a show with, with those guys would be great. So, but it's not something that I've, I've ever um, been approached about doing. And so, but it, I mean, obviously, as a, as a childhood dream, it would be great to be on, on stage with those guys, you know. Despite the comparisons, Seether's music has evolved into its own distinct sound over the years, but the Nirvana influence is undeniable, and Morgan has never shied away from acknowledging it. After all, as he once said, Nirvana changed my life, and I'll always be grateful for that. Many of these bands had their moments of success, you might have even enjoyed their music, and that's perfectly fine. However, they might not be remembered as fondly today. Regardless of your feelings about them, one thing is clear. Nirvana was, and still is to this day, one of the most influential bands ever. But we've only just scratched the surface. There are plenty more bands that copy Cobain's sound and style, so stay tuned for part two where we dig even deeper into the grunge copycat controversy. In the meantime, let us know down below who's your top pick for a band that smells like Nirvana. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.